Oh, and uh, many of you have seen it, and some of you may not have. But it says, and, and I'm going to try to stick to this, where you can see the overall picture of what we're trying to do here at the Shield. And I want to make it very clear. Now, remember, these messages go out into the whole world. We, we must remember that. You might say, well, why Bob talking to us about that? We know that already. But how many people out there in the world, over 10,100 people now that have listened to all of our various uh, DVD tapes and so forth, are getting new information about a little church in the country that is spreading the gospel and carrying out the great commission of our Lord. Now, it says, write the vision, this is Habakkuk, uh, write the vision and make it plain upon tablet that he may run that readeth it. All right, so we've had this down on, uh, not a, uh, on, a, on a piece of paper, and uh, we would say that would be the tablet. Now, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So we have a vision here. And this conference that uh, we're having over this weekend is part of this vision to get the gospel out and touch people now that we don't usually touch in our community and all around. It'll be on the radio uh, and every other type of advertisement that, that we have. But I want to say something. The vision will perish without a people. Amen. Remember that. that and, and this is why it's so important that we allow God to work in our lives today because two years from now, I mean, if God pours out his spirit, and I know uh, Frank's heart on this, my heart, and some of your, uh, Willie, and all of our leaders desire to see a great revival. But when God moves, I want you to listen to this now, we have to move with him. Regardless of who he uses in this assembly, we have to be ready and have a heart full of love and obedience. Remember the scripture on obedience up there to move with the Holy Spirit. Somebody wave at me. All right, we understand that. Say, say this ain't about me. This ain't about you. It's about, it's about souls being saved and us being obedient, carrying out the Great Commission. And it takes all of us to do that, okay? So, where there is no vision, the people perish, but where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So, now you say, well, what law are we under? Well, we're under the law of love. The love, that takes care of everything. All the Ten Commandments, everything. That one law of love. <clears throat> that we love each other as Christ loved us us. And that means we have to give our life for one another. Are you listening? Okay. Now, look at it now. We're going to follow this down. God, our Heavenly Father, and Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our helper. Remember, the Holy Spirit is our helper. He, he shows us things to come. We've been talking about that. He shows us things to come. He, he's the real teacher. He's our God. He's the, he's the one that will release the fruits of this, his spirit. See, when we really line up with him, then we manifest love, patience, kindness, friendliness. I mean, just to be friendly with one another is a tremendous aspect. I've, I've met some Christians who are just the most unfriendly people I've ever met in my life. Have you ever met any like that? Yeah. I'm glad that none of us is like that. All right, now, remember when we come to church and we hear the message, we want to see ourselves in the negative and in the positive. Now, how many understand that? How many would go to the doctor and say, Doc, I know I got something wrong with me, but don't tell me. <laughs> I'll get mad at you if you do. <laughs> So he said, well, okay, you got cancer, you're going to die in three, three months, but uh, I, I, I don't know if I need to tell you that, how you can really get healed. <laughs> because that's what I want to know. If, if you tell me I've got cancer, I want to know how can you heal it. So what we try to do here is as the Word of God goes out, we will see ourselves in the negative and in the positive, but God still loves us. No need to get offended or mad and I've had people so many times just leave the church. 
They thought I'm personally attacking them. I ain't attacking nobody. I want to see the body of Christ grow. Frank and me spent five or six years, I forgot that, seven days a week down here at this altar praying that people will grow up in Christ. Now we have, we have, we have laid out the prayers now. And now we want, to, we want to just reap the benefits. We want to reap the fruit of it all. So look what it says now. What, 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 uh, <clears throat> what, is the, what does God want us to do? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now you can't do that on your own power. And the Bible tells us we can't. In Philippians uh, chapter 3 verse uh, uh, 13. Not in our own strength, but in his strength, with the love that he's poured into us, the agape love that we've received from him, we can love him. And if we love him, we're going to be obedient. And if we love him, if we're obedient, we're going to have an intimate relationship with him. Remember the scripture I read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8? Do you remember that? And he replied to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your, and with all your mind and intellect. Now that's something God is working in us, but we must let him do the work in us. <clears throat> let me tell you something. There's no problem. There is no problem loving people that treat me mad, bad. Now I didn't, I remember I used to throw bricks at them. See all these rocks up here? I, those, are, those are rocks that I, I used to throw at people. I just wanted to show you how many rocks. <laughs> see, see, if you're still having a hard time loving people and you're jealous and you're, you know, and all, some, you know, you, you just say, Lord, I need your grace. Don't, don't, don't be discouraged. Just say, God, how many remembers the scripture about God will give us more and more grace? Somebody tell me about that scripture. Where's that found? Right. James 4, 6. God will give us more and more grace to love people that don't love us or don't treat us right or snotty to us. You ever seen somebody being snotty to you? Indifferent to you? How many likes that? We don't like that. So do unto others as you would have them to do to you. That's so simple. What's so complicated about it? There ain't no complicated about it. Let God do the work. Let me tell you, if he done the, didn't do the work in me, I'd be throwing fire out there at you. <laughs> I used to do that. That was fun, just see people burn. <laughs> All right, I'm just, I'm just, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Love one another as I have loved you. Ooh. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus said that. How we doing, saints? Huh? Doing better? Are we doing better? But doing better? To, doing better? <laughs> yeah, I love you. <laughs> you mess with me, I'll stick you in the eyes. <laughs> Come on, church. Now you know I'm telling the truth. All right. That, hey, I'm, this is the word of God. This ain't, don't get mad at me because I said love one another as Christ. Lord. I'm, I'm going to preach the gospel. That means me too. Have I, have I not ever done that? I'm like Samuel. If I've done anything, come on up here. Tell everybody. Any complaints? Have I ever treated you wrong? Okay. Have you ever treated me wrong? Don't, I don't want to hear it. I know, I, but I still love you. I know the human nature. I mean, if I haven't learned anything after 83 years, you, I tell you, you guys don't stand a chance. I've been on the front line for all, many years. All right, listen. Now, bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. If somebody has really repent it, they will bring forth right fruit. Yes. Are you listening? See, I can tell somebody that's not doing what they should do. They haven't really repented because their fruit is not the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, ouch. ouch. Oh, yeah, I say ouch sometimes too. 
Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. All right, and so that's something, that's Luke 3, 8. All right, there we go. Bear fruit that you are deserving and consistent with your repentance. That is, conduct worthy of a heart change, a heart of whoring sin, and do not begin to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you that God is able from these stones, right up there, to raise up his senses for Abraham. Now, let me tell you something. Not all of Abraham's children, Lord, help me to put this right, are not in line with the inheritance. Abraham and through Isaac, can you, the seed, has to come through the seed. See, Abraham had other children by other women, and they were not in the lineage. Okay? I really got you confused now, but I don't know how I got off on that, but I assume some of you can grasp that. We won't talk about it because I got so much I want to share. Okay. Preach the gospel to the poor. Heal the brokenhearted. This is what we try to do here. Preach deliverance to the captives. If you're captive by an attitude, if you're captive by some sin, let me tell you something. What we've got to deal with, I'm telling you, children of God, this world is falling apart from the hinges. There are so many people on drugs, on alcohol, uh, on everything you could imagine in this day. This is why this vision is probably more important today than it was 20 years ago. If you watch the news as I watch it, I mean the people that are addicted even to pain pills. And there's, they're dying every day. I, I forgot it was 20, 29 people a day die over uh, indulging in pain pills. Hello, are you out there? See, this is serious business that we are dealing with. This is not child play. And I know you know that, but remember people out there need to hear that. This goes out. We are in the most serious business that there is, and that is trying to get people to come and get connected with God, get saved first, and get delivered from all the addiction. So many people just feel so rejected. I mean, just that one thing, and it, and, and, and it causes them to act and react in stupid, ungodly ways, and it destroys their, their witness that they have of the Lord. Because they feel like they're rejected. Or if I can't be first, I don't want to play. Well, you got to get over those attitudes. No, we, we are called by God. We've been commissioned by God Almighty, the creator of, of, of heaven and earth, to carry out his agenda. And I know sometimes you may get tired of coming to church, but that's all part of the program. One day you won't be coming like this. You'll be in heaven. Yes. It'll be a whole lot different. Everybody say, bless the Lord. But until then, let's be brave, be courageous, be obedient. Get that intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. Because this little passing hour, that's all it is, we out of here. See, I can say that I've known hundreds of people out of here. See, I'm 83. People, a lot of people that I work with, are there, but they're gone. I talk to them just like I talk to you. I talk about the little passing hour. But they gone. Where are they at? If they didn't receive Christ. Instead of up. Now, some of them up. Okay. All right. All right, so these are the people that come into this assembly and they have these things. Yes, they love God, that they're saved, but they need to be delivered from the world, the flesh, and the devil. It is so easy to get caught up with the world. Dress like them, talk like them, think like them, stink like them. Isn't it? So easy. And, and the Bible says, you can't love the world and God too. Wow, Lord. So we got to get our attitudes right. Now, listen to this. And recovery of sight to the blind. There's many people still blind spiritually. 
and they're blind physically. To set at liberty them that are bruised. When a person is bruised, they in captivity. They act and react in a negative way to everything. I've said that over and over and over and over and some folks still can't catch it. How do you act and react when everything doesn't go your way? Who acts like that? Oh, you scratch. I thought you were going to raise your hand. How many love me? All right. I'm pushing, I know. All right. Listen, I believe the same commission that Jesus gave to disciples is for the church today. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore, I, therefore go, he's talking to us, go and make disciples of all nations. But you can't make somebody a disciple that don't want to be a disciple. You can't teach somebody that don't want to be taught. We understand that. So the very few people that want to be taught, then you spend your time with them and try to teach them. Others come and go. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And that's what Jesus was saying. All right. We see it on the board. Now, our effort to fulfill the Great Commission involves teaching every believer to be a soul winner. I believe every believer can be a soul winner. And I'm going to be having some classes on that. We've had it on the past, uh, in the past, but we're going to have it again. It's the most wonderful thing in the world to be able to talk about Jesus to people. Have you noticed people can talk about everything, but they're scared to death to talk about Jesus to somebody they don't know? Am I telling the truth? Come on, you got to recognize now that may be, a, I ain't putting you down, but why don't you do it? You're scared. Am I preaching truth? I used to be scared. Scared to death. But God delivered me and I can talk to anybody. If somebody, if it's a big, a thousand people out and they said, uh, would Bob told to come up here and just talk to us. I'd just go right up here and I'd just talk about Jesus. Wouldn't bother me at all. I don't care if they throw me out. I don't care if they kill me. I'm already a dead man. Can you understand that? I died with Christ on the cross. God said, I've given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So we should be able to talk about Jesus. And I do. Everywhere I go, I talk about Jesus. Frank and Linda had their driveway, you know, paved. It looks really good, by the way, Linda. But before the guy got in there, I, I had already talked to him about the Lord. <laughs> Gave him a few tracks and told him my jokes and all. <laughs> he wanted to pay, pay mine too, you know. And I said, no, well, he wanted $1,800 or something. And then, but, you know, if it go a little further, it costs you more. So I said, well, I'll bypass. So I sent him over to Frank and Linda. And they got theirs done. It, doesn't it look good? <laughs> you tell them it looks good. Now, don't get jealous. My driveway ain't got no pavement on my driveway. There's no rocks on my pavement. Well, thank God you got rocks on it. I'd rather have rocks on my driveway than in my head. All right. And besides, we want to pray for them. They're going to go, I think they're going to leave tomorrow and go up to uh, uh, New Jersey to see her mother. And her mother uh, is wanting to see her daughter, her daughter so... And her daughter wants to see mama. So we're going to pray for you, Linda. You and Frank have a good trip. All right. Now look. <clears throat> Be a soul winner and to help every believer to become mature. Oh, mature. Oh, God. Oh, how many in here would like to see your children get mature? Let's see your hands. Come on now. And you, uh, don't flake out on me. You know you would. That's how I desire to see God's people mature. And I want to see myself mature. God, I don't want to be just a little, I want to be mature. Man, a man of wisdom and understand, a man of kindness, gentleness, the fruits of the Spirit flowing.
Is that bad? <laughs> How many want to see that? Huh? I mean, to see people, you know, mature. Huh? Oh, my goodness. Tell that boy I'd be glad to see him grow up. I got beautiful grandchildren, but I wish they would grow up. <laughs> oh, if I could just tell you, but Susan might get me, better not. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm an open book. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, we won't go that way. But anyway, that is so true. How God wants, because he's got to have mature children to do his work. Is that not true? Committed, dedicated, consecrated. And I thank God that you guys are. Remember, this tape goes out to others, you know. I like to say this to the ones that ain't here. But unfortunately, you're here. I mean, fortunately, you're here. And you're the faithful ones. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. I don't know exactly what all that means, but I tell you one thing. I like it. It ain't down. It's up. And I know one thing, I can never make it on my own effort. Oh, Lord, if you don't grow me up, I'll just stay a little baby. Get my pacifier and get it over in the corner and suck it. Did I tell you about the pacifier? I got some back there if you need one. I learned that from one gentleman. He said, you know, these people, he said, you know what? If anybody's got trouble about smoking cigarettes, he said, I got the solution. Anytime you want a cigarette, just put the pacifier in there. So he gave out pacifiers to a lot of the men and everything. And that night when they all met back, they were all sitting on the front seat with the pacifiers. You want one? I got some back there. I bought some after that. How many wants one? (laughs) I suck mine regularly. Because sometimes I get so hungry, I can eat the whole bear. I'm going to eat this. <laughs> get your pacifier and suck it. It'll help you. Or have your wife to slap you inside the face every time you, every time you open that refrigerator. You, 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 you'll be like David. I went astray before I was afflicted. But since my wife afflicted me, I don't go astray no more. <laughs> uh, you know I'm speaking truth. Okay, here we go. Time, Elm. It's eight. I've got another half an hour. Okay. Woo, boy, read all of that. Man, that's powerful. All right, here we go. Remember, we want to attain to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Ah, powerful. And that's why we got the fivefold ministries and other teachers and, and, and men of God and women of God. All right. First Peter 2 1 says to the believer, therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all guile and all hypocrisy. You know what hypocrisy is, don't you? Being a hypocrite. Well, we all had a little bit of that in us. And sometimes it shows up. But thank God for 1 John 1, 9. Oh, boy. When I'm, before I come over here, I'm, 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 I'm prayed up, forgiven up. How many are like that? I don't crack that door until I know that I, I've forgiven everybody, I love everybody, and I'm ready. I'm happy. I'm smiling. You're not going to meet some prune. You're going to meet a man of God that has a smile and, and knows about the blessings of God. Somebody smile at me. Take your teeth out. Let me see them. <laughs> chop, 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 chop. That's true. How many here has a husband when you come, they come in from work and they're such a blessing? Anybody want to testify? Testify, Rick. I mean, uh, Missy. Does Rick come in smiling? I didn't hear what she said, but I guess it was good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know the pain. I know all about all that. Okay. Hallelujah. I, I, I used to come in and say, Susan, pray for me. Oh, oh, the colonel got me today. The general got me. Oh, God. She, 
and come out, you rascal, you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm serious. I'd have, I'd have to have my wife pray for you. You don't do that? Huh? You got to learn to do that. Pray, pray one for another that you might cast out those demons. I mean, you pray for one another that you might be healed. All right, here we go. Envy, envy, oh, envy. Ugh. I'm so envious of that person. They get all the praise all the time. Ugh. We can all identify with that. Uh, how about this? And all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Now that gives you a, a, a little wisdom there that you can grow by what? What will cause you to grow? Word. Look, at the, look at the scriptures there. The word. Huh? The word. Grow by the, the word of God will cause us to grow. You see that? Desire the sincere milk of the word. Or make it very clear, desire the word. Why? That you may grow thereby. That you'll grow as you stay in the word of God and read it. And meditate on it and learn it and learn the scriptures. Susan and me sometimes, we just ride the car and she quotes scriptures and I quote scriptures. She quotes, I quote. She quotes, I quote. She sings, I sing. We quote, I quote. Man, the Spirit of God just, you know, is going to hang around somebody like that. You know what I mean? Who's going to hang around a grouch? Let me see your hands. You think the Holy Spirit wants to hang around a grouch? No. God is love. We quench the Holy Spirit when we're grouchy. I'm so glad I've never been grouchy, aren't you? <laughs> you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> I've had my years of grouching, believe me. All right, listen to the word of the Lord. Hebrews 12, 1. Let us lay aside every weight. Hmm, you could take that both ways, couldn't you? And the sin which does so easily beset us. If I would, if we'd all be so honest and open, what sin so easily besets you? Donuts. Ice cream. Don't you touch my donuts and my ice cream. Would you? That's my donut. What particular sin do you have? You ain't going to tell. I can say that. I can tell that. You ain't going to tell us. Because everybody's probably got one. Could be your temper. Could be a lot of different things. But it doesn't mean you're lost. It doesn't mean that God don't love you. But the Bible encourages us to get rid of those things because that is what destroys relationships with one another and with God and our neighbors. We want to get rid of those negative things in our lives that keep popping up and, and, ways, and, and just the atmosphere just... We want to create an atmosphere of love and power and gentleness and kindness. The Spirit of the Lord dwells in a place like that. I can walk into a person's home and tell you, my spirit can pick it right up. Arguing, fussing. How many can do that? Yeah, you can. I know you can. All right, listen to this. So that can be a weight, believe me. And then it says, and let us run with patience the race. Oh, I didn't. Some Christians don't even know they're in a race. That is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You know, I'd like to see the church one time, all of us, be with us. We all just all get in this elevator and we go down, all the way down into hell. We got some tapes back there, by the way, of some people went to hell.
glad to get one. <laughs> Awful quiet back there. <laughs> a man and a woman, and they, they do a good job at explaining. And God, that's what makes God so sad because he don't want nobody to perish. And think, he loved them so much that he gave his only begotten son that when they wouldn't have to go there. But they're there because of their own stupidity and their own foolishness, not accepting the grace and the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's why we're here to preach the gospel, that they don't have to experience that, that place called hell. All right, look now. Ephesians 4, 17. Walk not as other Gentiles walk. In the vanity of their minds, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is the exhortation that, that Paul is giving to the Ephesians and to us. Watch your thinking. Your thinking. Watch your stinking thinking. Remember the message I preached on stinking thinking? It will form your personality, it will form your character, it will form your moods, it will form your feelings, and that's why you feel the way you do. Somebody say amen. amen. Aren't you glad you got a preacher that, that tells you the truth? Amen. Yes. Just get rid of that stinking thinking. Because you're going to stink up the whole place. How many love me? Wow. I, I got to milk a little harder. All right. Now, I'm serious, but I love people. I know, I know, the, I know the, 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 the way to walk. I've, I've learned God has disciplined me. See, see you don't understand. See, see, I went astray before I was afflicted. Uh, you, you understand that? But since I've been afflicted, I don't go astray no more. Uh, can can you all understand that? Huh? How about yourself? You ain't been afflicted enough, have you? Well, you just keep thinking the way you're thinking and you're going to get afflicted much more. But when you finally learn, then you put off that stinking thinking. That's what he's telling them right now. Notice what he says. And that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now look, I want you to see that. Put that on the board. Look at what it says. Mm, that is powerful. Now I want you to see something there now. Ephesians 4, 17, 32. Well, we can't put that much on there. But anyway, look. All right. That's 4, 17. All right, just read it from here. Walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. That's where the vanity is. Right up in our little minds. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How do you do that? By, by, by getting into the Word of God and living according to the Word of God and the Holy Spirit will see your effort and see that's what you want and He will add His power to it and you'll come into it and it's so easy to love and bless people. So easy just to love people. I wish I could share some of my experiences and, and you would say, wow, gee whiz, Pastor Bob. <coughs> You got a rough life in some areas. See, I got grandchildren. I buy their cars. I said, now remember, now keep oil in the engine. See, if you don't keep oil in the engine, see, see the engine will burn up and your car won't last. Oh yeah, Grandpa. Hello, Grandpa. Yeah, my engine, something's wrong with it. Got any oil in it? Hello? Hello? Are you there? I checked her all one day. It was no oil in the engine. What's wrong with my engine? You don't have no oil in it. None of you don't have to go through none of that. How many of you ever going through any of that? Would you? Well, look at there. Look at it. I'm hitting the right spot. Man, I'm telling you. Right now, I'm in a situation like that. One, I just, we just bought the, you know, they're supposed to pay us, pay us back. Yeah, read my lips. It doesn't bother me. It's not the idea of the money. I want them to grow up and mature because we, we're checking out here pretty soon. We're not going to hang another 20 years. Susan, me's going. 
You guys want to hang around, you can't. I ain't. We're going to head out. <laughs> Some of you probably beat me. I tell you, I can see it right now. <laughs> Aren't you glad? How many is ready to go to heaven? Right now, I mean, right now. One, two, three, four, five. Some of you are back on that. What's wrong with y'all back there? Y'all must be having a good time down here. <laughs> How many love me? Very, very little, okay. All right, here we go. All right. I have, now listen to this. I have found as a minister that people are submitting and yielding to the old nature, thus giving ground to Satan and evil spirits. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. That means you can give place to the devil. How many understand that language? Yes. Give no place. That means you can. Well, when you think wrong and you act wrong, you're giving place to the devil. And you're going to pay a price and everybody around you is going to pay a price. Because you're going to be ugly, mean, honorary. Have anybody met anybody like that besides me? Huh? All right, listen to this. I have found as a minister that people are submitting and yielding to the old nature, thus giving ground to Satan and evil spirits. <clears throat> the Bible says that which you yield to becomes your master. Listen to me now. That which we yield to becomes our master. That's just a law. Those that jump off a building that's 20 story high and hit the pavement will be out of here. That's the way it works. And if we yield to something, what we yield to, and either in our mind or in our everyday practice, becomes our master. Now that's where the struggle comes to try to beat that master off of you. See, some of you can say, yeah, preach it, Bob, I believe it will. And some of you know what I'm talking about because you've had some masters and you've been trying to break those uh, holds of those masters. And brother, you know it's a hard job. Now, this is why this vision is here, to help people. And they, and they don't see it. They don't understand. Some of their traits that they have is because what you yield to becomes your master and so many Christian people have so many, and my heart goes out. I am not a mean man. But if we can head it off at the past, that's better than passing through the past, getting addicted, and then trying to overcome the addiction. And that's the trouble in our nation today and the world. All right. <clears throat> Some negative forces we will help people get set free from it. This is what we've worked with for many years. So that they grow up into Christ and all things are. Here's what people, when they come in here, and some of us may still have some of these traits. Rejection. Are you free from all rejection? If you don't get your way, do you feel like you're being rejected? Well, we're human beings. So if you did feel it, you don't have to yield to it. Insecurity. How many people are so insecure? All right, let's move on. Inferiority. Lust. Now, that ain't just lust for the flesh. That's lust for things. And we all have these traits to some degree. But these are the things we have to watch out for and not let these things control us. But some people have them at such great degrees that it dominates their life. We must understand that. Some people you just have to love back to life. With all their mistakes, you just love them. Until, until that inner man of theirs can really, hey, you know... That man really loves me. That woman really loves me. God really loves me. See, love, perfect love, casts out fear. You could have all the knowledge in the world and don't have love. Nothing. 
Doesn't mean nothing. That's in the scriptures. Listen to this. Greed, selfishness, despair, guilt, condemnation, unworthiness, fear. Check that out. Have you ever had any of them? Sure you have. You've had every one of them and so have I. Because the human nature is full of all those, that stuff. And you might not understand it, but if you look back in your life and sort of stop, you're twitching and twatching long enough and start thinking about, oh, I see, I understand myself a little bit better now. I see why I did that. I see why I didn't do that. I see why I don't witness. I see this, I see that. The Holy Spirit will show you. Now you can call upon the name of the Lord and he'll begin to set you free. You understand that? See, first you've got to recognize the cause. How many went to school? How many learned something? Very good. How many learned that for every cause there is a what? Huh? A what? Effect. An effect. Very simple principle. Cause and effect. <laughs> what causes us to act that way? What caused me? Got your list. <laughs> I'm so gracious to give you the list. You don't find that in many places. Some people come to me, they want deliverance. Oh boy, that calls for a, that calls for a disciplined life. You're going to have to begin which I would show you how to do it. Anyway, now notice, broken hearted, unrenewed minds, cult involvement, cult involvement hurts, wounded spirit, a wounded spirit who can bear, worldly spirit, carnality, all of these things. Is what, all right, turn your page now. We've got 20 minutes trying to finish up. All right, now, this is why we're having seminars. This is why we're having conference. That is part of the vision. Seminars will be scheduled periodically to help God's people overcome basic problems. We will have five or more trailers on the church property for God's people to stay in in order to break old habit patterns and get set free to a new way of living. Now, we have not been able to do that, and I don't think we can get trailers on the property now but we could build cottages, have about five cottages. I guarantee you some of you people right here have children that need, if they would yield and submit, we could put them in those cottages and work with them 24 seven. We'd have to have people working with them 24 seven, watch every move and actually guide them in their life until those old habits are broken. A lot of things are just habits. Remember, remember the dog? Remember, I stepped over the dog. The only thing is, the dog ain't there, but the habit is in me. Frank kept going by his mother's womb, but, she, I mean, room, but she's not there. She's in heaven. See, habits are formed. And you know yourself, it's hard to break negative habits. But if you can get and get the practice, the new habits, then it's so easy. You just do it naturally. It's just simple. It's not complicated. When somebody says, good morning, you just, you've trained, good morning. Somebody smiles at you, you smile back at them. Somebody frowns at you, you slap them. <laughs> That'll teach you. You don't do it physically, but their looks just about do it. How many love me? Yeah, not many of you, okay. All right, listen, now that's an important thing. We can have, now, because we can't save the world, but we can... At least we can touch some folks. We can try to get our own family saved. That would be a major uh, thing. And I know about some of your kids. I know about them. They need help. But they don't think they do. But we know they do. But you've got to have people willing to work with people and know how to love people and treat people and nurture people and minister to people. Okay? Then that's what we're, where you guys are being trained. And this is where this convention, people are going to come in here and, and you know they're strangers, so we got tapes over there. Uh, Frank has piled up a bunch down there. You can take those and, and say, here, take those home and read them. They'll bless you. Everybody remember over there, right there at the bottom, there are stacks out there. I gave a stack away like that the other day. 
to that woman today I give a stank like that. Getting that word out there where people can get the help. Because see, everybody's going to the pill. But that pill just, and they're dying. Now, there's a moderation in all things. And I know that. You know that I know that. But the pill, the gospel pill, we need to have understanding of how the gospel pill works when we get it into us. Because it will effectively work in us just like that little pill, that uh, blood pressure pill. Explain it. No, you just take it and it levels. The word of God will change us. God himself lives in us. It is God working in us. God work, working, working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. It will be God as we get God in us and, and understand his voice and understand his movements and his prompting and his teaching, it will be God that will deliver. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, all right now, here we go. Five more minutes, okay. All right, let's finish this. Remember, breaking those old habits. Anybody got any old habits they're trying to break? Yeah, all of you have something, there's something. Well, see, that's why you come to church. You know, if you don't think you got anything, say, when I preach, you're going to, oh, I got that. What is, I dare him to touch. He's touching my, he's touching my golden cow. Who does he think he is? I'm your pastor. I love you. I give my life for you. That's how much I love you. And I've proven it over the years. Wow. <laughs> So you're not used to people that can love you like that. I cry over you. I cry over every one person in this place. I cry. I've cried and I've fasted. Frank and me have spent time down here, yeah, praying, but crying, weeping. And then even about our own selves, we know, Lord, we need help here ourselves. Don't you think I'm standing up here and telling you I got everything together. I'm still getting things together. But I tell you, I'm learning. God, it's revelation, giving me revelation after revelation. I got so much I want to preach and I don't get the time to do it. But I just take my time, little by little, I feed, trying to feed. Because I'm in that word every day, every day. I am, I am before God. My wife and me are before God. And I thank God that we can do that now because we're retired. All right, now listen to this. We'll finish. How can a believer be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, with these things dominating their lives? I believe every believer should have a victorious life. For in Romans 5, 17 says, How much more will those who receive God's abundance provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ? We have been all given the abundance of grace. See, I got the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Therefore, I could reign in this life through Christ Jesus, my Lord. And if you need more grace, where do you get it from? James, what? Four, six. God will give us more and more. And I'll tell you another place you can get it. You can come boldly to, re, to the throne of God to receive help and grace in time of need. Amen. So don't just go there crying and then leave. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. And stay there until you get it. Stay there until you get it. Oh, well, I got some other things to do. Got to pick up the kids. Got to cook supper. I understand all those things. Okay, here we go. The church has occupied a rather passive role as if it had a defeated attitude in the face of the enemy that rules in the world. I believe God is saying to this church, rise up and rule in the midst of your enemies. The God of this world has established his strongholds and authority in the land. I believe the Lord that came to uh, Israel through Moses is the word for the church today. See, I have placed the land before you. 
Go in and possess the land. Deuteronomy 1.8. A passive attitude will not conquer and possess. It is never God's will for his people to suffer from the oppression of the enemy. God wants his people to be a victorious people, a strong people that can rule in circumstances rather than being ruled by circumstances. A people that can determine the will of God and take directions rather than being directed by a turn of events. He wants a people that will magnify the name of the Lord who was made him who has made him their strong tower, their refuge, their shield, their covering, and their conqueror. Together we stand, and having done all, we stand. I love you all, Pastor Bob Tilton. So that's a vision. You understand why we're doing certain things here. You wonder why we have in this conference to reach out, to touch people, and we all have a part in it. And so... Pray this week that the Spirit of God will be present in this meeting and that we'll all be faithful and carry out our part because I think it's all in our training that when the Spirit of the Lord really moves in power, we'll move with the Spirit and not be an instrument of the devil to stop the move of God. As I look back and study, I've studied all the different uh, moves of the Spirit all the way back, as far as I could go, analyzed, prayed, read, studied. And so many times when the Spirit begins to move, some man or somebody will start sticking their ugly head up and try to take charge over it. You've got to let the Spirit move. We just flow with it. Are you listening? Yes, sir. You might not understand that. <clears throat> you might see things you don't like. Yeah, you will. But you're going to see some things you like too. Because the devil will try. You read the Bible. You read the Bible. You know what the Bible says. I mean, when the Spirit of God was moving. I mean, you read and study those chapters. The devil was doing his thing too. That's why Peter ended up in jail. The devil was doing his thing too. Just remember, Justine, if I go to jail, if any of these guys go to jail, Linda, just remember, we like that cake, you know, the, you, know if, you know, a couple of donuts too, you know. If fried chicken ain't too bad either. <laughs> you gotta be that free. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We serve a God that cannot be defeated. Why am I worried about this little past an hour when I have eternities after eternities? Now, see, your mind's not renewed because you're not saying amen to that. When your mind gets renewed, here's what you're going to be. Those that are looking for his appearance, how's that scripture go? He's coming for those that are what? looking for his appearance. Yes. And if we're so tied up in this world and enjoying all of this down here so much, we ain't looking for it. Don't you come now, Lord. It reminds me of the time when Susan and me was in the honky-tonk. Don't come now, Lord. We got trapped into that by our ancestors. Okay, I don't need to say anything. Anyway, I told her not to drink that stuff. It was right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We'll strike that off the table. How many love me? Well, that's a little vision. Now we know what? Just flow. Just flow. Love. Flow. Be obedient. Just do what we have to do. Flow. God will give you plenty of time to take a nap during the week. Yes, sir. You'll have time to go to grocery shopping. God's a good God. But there's times he wants us to roll up our sleeves and let's go get them. Are you ready? So let's do it. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that we need a vision. We have the vision. We just need more folk. So, Lord, we look to you to bring the folks in. And they'll be faithful folks. Men and women that are really to walk and flow and work with one another. That's a big test of our Christianity to be able to work with one another in the, in the spirit of Christ. 
And I want to thank you for that now that these people are, all of us, we submit one to another. And we have no axe to grind. We just want to see God glorified. Whoever you choose, whatever, whatever, we're all part of the same body of Christ. Same Father, same Holy Ghost, same faith, same baptism, same everything. We're one in Christ. And we thank you, Holy Ghost, using us this weekend. And we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you. If you need prayer, come up. We'll be glad to pray for you.